Warning! Warning! Captain Clarification over here! While it is possible to have the power type gear equipped to the bike gear, it is only possible at one point in the story with Vector and his bike gear. This was likely an oversight on part of the developers, as if one were to try to, to equip the power type gear to a bike gear, say in Free Race, the power type gear will not appear. I figured I should clarify it just so I didn't spread any misinformation. So without further ado, on with the story. Unlike the previous entries which had in-engine animated cutscenes, Free Riders is presented in a TV-styled format. The story is about a mysterious figure called King Doc who announces a World Grand Prix, with the grand prize being a fabulous cash prize and treasure! Or should I say, and or treasure, because that is something he will later say for some reason. Anyway, this announcement attracts four different teams to participate in the tournament. Team Sonic, Team Dark, Team Rose, and Team Babylon. Or... the Babylon Rogues if you prefer, but I'll, but I'll just say Team Babylon for because everyone else has Team This, Team That, so, you know. Okay then. The story is broken up into several campaigns, each team having their own campaign, with the player required to beat each team's story to unlock the final campaign. Also, if the opening wasn't alluding to it enough, there aren't just standard races in this tournament, but other challenges incorporated to test the abilities of the players. Most of the missions are returning ones from previous entries. Aside from the standard races, there's Ring Collection where you try to collect as many rings as possible, Trick Attack, where you perform tricks to earn points, with better tricks earning you more points. There are even character type missions that return, now named Skill Attack. Speed type involves jumping on as many unique rails as possible. Fly type involves flying through all of the dash rings that you can. Don't worry if you see extra in these missions. Those are just there in case you mess up and want to recover. Though, of course, there is the always perfectly acceptable reset function so that you can get the best score, just saying. And last is Power Type, where you have to clear a certain amount of debris and finish the stage. Weird enough, these missions allow you to do them in either regular or goofy style, which is a considerate touch, even if small. There's also Speed Survival, which originated from the first entry, and in that game, you cleared a whole lap to beat the mission. In this game, it is only a portion of the stage. Even one-on-one -on -one duels return, and that was still credit to the first entry. There is SOME originality in the form of air survival, which despite originating from the first entry technically, is given at least a twist here. This time, besides not using a special gear for air, there is the, albeit unspoken, twist where you have to get to the end of the stage with just enough air. And by that, I mean get to the end of the stage and don't run out of air at all. Despite the lack of a clear explanation, at least it's a unique twist, which is more than I can say for the lack of unique missions that this game offers. The only mission that's entirely unique in this game is the damage survival missions exclusive to Team Darks' story, where you toss torpedoes at your opponents to get points. Sadly, this is by far the easiest mission in the game. Most of the missions you are going to see overall are free races, trick attack, ring collection, and the skill attack missions. None of the missions are bad in particular, but I would have appreciated if the game had more unique missions to its name. Zero Gravity, for example, had both returning missions and a decent amount of new missions. 
Granted, those unique missions were based around the unique mechanics of the game, whereas Freeriders was more back to basics with the first game, say for the Kinect controls. Still, the game could have had more unique missions, such as ones where you have to hold on to transportation and collect as many rings as you can. <laughs> How about more wackier missions that deal with the power-ups? You know, extreme bowling, golfing, and basketball to name a few. Granted, it would normally be out of place for a racing competition, but King Doc did say that the competition was all about testing your skills in a variety of challenges, so why not? Something to think about in the meantime. After you beat a mission, you get a ranking based on your performance, and unlock Supersonic if you beat all of the missions on the highest ranking. Unfortunately, there are no extra Sega-related characters or courses to unlock. But that's the least of what I have to say about this game. Once you beat all of the four campaigns, a final fifth will appear, with the true mastermind being... Spoiler alert! Dr. Eggman! Okay, that last part of Metal Sonic murdering Dr. Eggman didn't happen. But Metal Sonic did in fact steal that data from Dr. Eggman. Metal Sonic used the tournament as an opportunity to gather data on everyone and become the ultimate gear racer. At one point in Team Sonic's story, Knuckles points out that the robot has been making funny noises during the matches, but no one seems to believe him and instead just write him off. Over time, Team Dark, that being Shadow and Rouge in this case, have been running it into the ground, with Team Sonic and Team Rose noticing this and pointing out their rude behavior towards the robot. At one point it is sent in for repairs after it collapses, where the robot then reappears fine later. After winning that race with the robot, when it reappears, Dr. Eggman reveals himself and his plan to collect everyone's data to build the ultimate extreme gear. Another race commences, Eggman loses, and Metal Sonic bursts from the robot, where it's revealed that Metal Sonic stole the data from Eggman and gave Eggman fake data instead. Despite stealing all of the data for itself, Sonic still is able to beat Metal Sonic in a race, and the game ends with Sonic declaring that everyone had at least a fun time, despite no one getting anything out of it. The story itself might be basic, but I have some issues with it. The game's approach to its story is similar to a previous game in the series Sonic Heroes, in more ways than one to say the least without spoiling anything. For example, both games have four campaigns that need to be completed to unlock the final story that takes place after each of the stories. How Sonic Heroes handles it is simple enough, with each and every team ending up in the same exact place at the end of their stories. How Sonic Freeriders handles its campaign is by having you beat each and every team. By playing as each and every team. Yeah, the story of each team is playing through the World Grand Prix and winning with the team you're playing as. 
as you would figure, this doesn't make any sense for continuity at all, so the final campaign where they all gather in the winner's spot, which is questionable in of itself why they are even doing that, handles this by keeping the true identity of the winners vague. As for the campaigns themselves, not much happens in the interactions with the characters. The cutscenes themselves feel like they are there for no more than just pure context, at best being a brief respite after all of that moving around. Aside from perhaps a few humorous moments, none of the interactions are really that interesting or memorable. Most of what I remember from the cutscenes was competitive bickering from most of the teams. Well, that ends this one scene with Jet the Hawk. The following scenes will be me spoiling some of the story of Sonic Riders, so you've been warned. In the first game, as Tails is discussing with Knuckles the science of what makes Extreme Gear float, Wave walks into the scene and notices Tails holding Sonic's blue star. Tails allows Wave to see it, and as she secretly notes it not being half bad for an amateur, she places a bomb on the underside of the gear and proceeds to insult the gear. And its maker. Later on, this comes into play with the race at Sand Ruins, with Sonic just about to win his race against Jet when Wave pushes a button and activates the bomb under the board, which blows Sonic away before he can cross the finish line, and Jet wins! In Sonic Freeriders, Jet exclaims that he is no cheater, yet in Sonic Riders, the first installment, there was cheating involved. Therefore, because cheating was involved, this is often considered an inconsistency with both stories. However, there are two things that most people don't know between these two stories. Those two things being consent and the rule. When it comes to consent, it is never shown whether Jet had talked Wave into placing that bomb on Sonix's board or not. We are never given such a scene. Therefore, it leads me to believe that Wave put that bomb on the board herself without telling Jet anything. This makes for a particularly funny detail, as Wave in that very same story gets offended when she thinks that Storm said he lost to Knuckles in that match in Egg Factory because of her gear. Despite that Storm mentioned nothing about Wave's gear, only Knuckles' gear. In that Knuckles was cheating with some kind of special gear! I wouldn't call this inconsistent, mind you. More so, I think that this helps establish Wave as more of a bully rival character to Tails. This isn't half bad for an amateur. Still, you can never be too careful. Hmm. <laughs> well, I never imagined anyone would enter the race with such a piece of junk. <laughs> Thanks, though. It was good for a laugh. <laughs> See ya, Shorty. Oh, that girl! Who does she think she is? Boss, it wasn't my fault! He, he must have cheated! That's it! He must have used some special type of gear! What? Are you implying that you lost because of my gear? No one can tune a gear the way I can! Accept it, buddy. It's not the board. Your skills just suck. What? Suck? Yes, S-U-C-K, suck. Su su Stop it! Now, let's get to the cheating aspect that Storm was mentioning a moment ago. The thing that most people forget about this competition is that it is a no-holds-barred competition aka an anything-goes, no-rules competition. This is mentioned twice in the story, once at the beginning of the story, and again before the Sand Ruins race. All things considered, in the context of the competition, this was acceptable. That would mean that from the perspective of Jet the Hawk, he likely would have been thinking that the whole thing was a happy accident. Ah, the dirt suits you so well! Uh, 
<laughs> However, I do wonder why no one ever asks about or even comments on the case of the mysterious exploding gear. It just happens. Later, Sonic will find himself at Babylon Garden with Jet there as well, but before Sonic races against Jet, Tails hands Sonic a spare gear that he's been working on. With this new gear, Sonic thanks Tails and heads for Dr. Eggman, then noticing that Jet is also after Eggman as well. They are both after Dr. Eggman, you see? With both after Eggman, their true duel begins, with Jet losing fair and square this time. That's what was shown in the story mode, but there is a bit more that goes on in mission mode. From what Storm the Albatross will say after you first start mission mode, it is stated to have come right after the World Grand Prix. Though more likely it has to have come right after everyone departs for their separate ways, as almost everyone involved in the story mode has a part in the mission mode. The exception being Cream the Rabbit, who isn't involved in the story mode at all, but has some missions in the mission mode. The point that I'm getting at here is that mission mode takes place right after story mode, and in that mode, something interesting is revealed about Jet. Though most of the missions consist of intercepting all of the tasks that the Babylon rogues were to have done, there are two I want to focus on. Though one is meant to be treated as a joke in its results. The first is a Sand Ruins rematch, where Sonic will race Jet on his regular Blue Star, whereas Jet has decided to use the Speed Balancer instead of his usual Type J. If you are able to get a gold medal ranking on the mission, Jet will go from I will play fair and square to Screw it! I'll do whatever it takes next time! Funny he should say that, as the final mission in mission mode is Sonic vs. the Babylon Rogues. With Jet still using the speed balance. <laughs> where if Sonic gets the gold medal rankings by coming in first place, Jet will say this. I battled him fairly, and I have no regrets. But I'll beat you someday, Sonic the Hedgehog! This time, Jet took the loss a lot better. This is something I feel has been translated from the story to Free Riders, where at one point the game heavily implies that Wave has been cheating yet again. Your gear is still as amazing as ever, Wave. Try not to sound so surprised, Shrimp. I did a ton of research and thought I'd given ours a perfect tune-up. If that was the result of your best efforts, this next race is going to be a disappointment. Jet, I can guarantee you will win this one. I don't need you to tell me that much, Wave. Wait a minute, you didn't do something to their gear, did you? I don't know what you could possibly mean. You better not do anything to tarnish my reputation here. The boss doesn't need dirty tricks to win this. He's got it in the bag. I wouldn't put anything past a bunch of rogues. Hey, I'm no cheater. Now let's settle this thing for good, Sonic the Hedgehog. All right, I'm ready when you are. The World Grand Prix is coming down to the wire! Yeah. Congratulations on an amazing championship victory! I think the whole world just fell in love with Team Babylon! So tell me, how does it feel to have won, guys? Eh, it was too simple to really feel like much of an accomplishment. What happened? Should I have gone easier on you, Sonic the Hedgehog? Looks like you win this time around, Jet. You're awfully calm about it. Aren't you ashamed at being beaten? Why? Luck is a big part of victory. This just means you are the lucky one today. Hey, nobody talks trash about the boss's wins. That was skill, not luck. Sorry, Sonic. It's all my fault. Seems like something went wrong with my tuning job. Wave? Y don't look at me, Jet. I, I don't know anything about it either. Now, oh, this doesn't feel right. 
see you next time, Jet. Wait, you can't leave like this. I call a rematch. What? Are you sure you want to do that? A legendary Windmaster doesn't accept anything short of absolute victory. All right, then. I'm always game for another round. I will say that Team Babylon's campaign best handles the last-minute rematch that everyone has. With Team Sonic's campaign, Jet's gear has a mysterious malfunction that has never explained where it came from. It just happened. The reasoning is even worse in the campaigns of Team Rose and Team Dark. Both involve E-10,000B falling to pieces, and despite both teams winning BEFORE the robot falls in their respective campaigns, Amo Chow still insists on enforcing the rules by saying that each team still needs a third team member. They solve this discrepancy by having one last final race, but agreeing to one less team member. Doesn't make much sense to me, but... them's the rules, I guess. One more match for the road. Again, aside from the jet scene, the story just feels like it's there for the sake of context, and not much more than that. Even Metal Sonic's appearance is arguably out of nowhere. The way I see it, Dr. Eggman snuck one of his robots into the competition, had to gather data, then Metal Sonic jumped the robot at some point and stole the data. I'd guess it was when it was being repaired. Speaking of robots, where's Omega? Omega was always the third member of Team Dark, and has been seen in most of the games that Shadow and Rouge have appeared in. All of a sudden, now they are down a partner for no explained reason. I get that would have been genuinely harsh if they were treating Omega like dirt instead of a random Eggman robot that looks just like many others that have been seen before. Oh man, looks like we have company. We gonna rumble? Targeting! Targeting! A tab! Look at all those Eggman robots! Smart thinking! Let's get out of here! Forget the red mutt! Let's go, Storm! Did she say red mutt? Why, why you? Hey, Knuckles, wait for me! But at the very least, the game could have made an effort to explain why Omega isn't anywhere to be seen. A similar case could be seen for Team Rose, where Big the Cat has been replaced with Vector. Unlike Team Darks' case, Big the Cat has only had one notable association with Amy and Cream in Sonic Heroes. 
as that would be his last major appearance in a Sonic game for a while due to his lack of popularity. As for Vector being chosen, I'd guess it would have something to do with finding a certain computer room. Find the computer room! 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 This computer room meme, to say the least, boosted Vector's popularity above Espio and Charmy, which were members of Vector's own Team Chaotix. Freeriders explains Vector being with Team Rose on account of a last-minute decision on Amy's part. Just what was happening before the matches started with Amy and Cream? Guess Extreme Gear Racing wasn't Big's cup of tea and he would rather be fishing all day long. Yes. Quiet and... However, my biggest gripe with the story by far is how much of a missed opportunity it was. It's one thing for the game to lack conflict, but if the game makes no effort to do anything with the characters besides having them be there, then what's the point? I guess I should mention the game's plot, because it has one. Basically, this game asserts that the Babylon rogues are descended from alien genies. Coupling that with how awkwardly the dialogue is delivered in these poorly done cutscenes, I... Look, this story really isn't worth much more than the basic mention, and while I don't care for it at all, I do respect that it just went nuts rather than taking itself seriously. Once you do have it down, this game has a silly story mode with even worse acting than Zero Gravity, but there are no alien ancestors in this title, so it's already more grounded and a bit less silly. Your mileage will vary on if that's good or bad. That's came after me, so that's it. Those things ah. must be after this story. Ah. I guess that settles ah. it. The key to solving ah. this mystery is me. <laughs> <laughs> Too awestruck by the treasure to notice me, eh? Eggman! Now hand over the treasure! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Hand over the treasure right now! Okay, catch! <laughs> the treasure of Babylon is finally mine! Huh? What is this thing? A piece of cloth? Let's see. Ah, this looks interesting. At long last, we've completed our ultimate invention. With this, our lives will be easier, without the need to work so hard to keep ourselves flying. Stolen, the 13th leader of the Babylon Rogues. It's amazing. The carpet's rich texture is a sight to behold, and the way it feels is extraordinary. Something such as this could only have been created in Babylon. Undoubtedly, this carpet will be in high demand from all around the world, but, but what's this? No way. I went to the trouble of holding the World Grand Prix for, for, for this? I, I can't believe I just wasted my time for this piece of junk. Hmm, what's this? Good eyes. Didn't think you'd spot it for a second, Shorty, but you did. Hey, what are you talking about? This isn't just a piece of fabric. Right, take a look at the material. It's the same stuff we use for our extreme gear. You don't say! Oh, it's... Not sure, but maybe it's a prototype gear. A magic carpet? I thought that those only existed in fiction. That's quite funny, actually. I never imagined that we Babylonians could be descendants of real genies. Was there an earthquake in here? It's gone! What's wrong, Knuckles? 
The legends say the Star Shard is supposed to be in this chalice. Did it roll off somewhere in the quake? Hey, Tails! What's up with this painting? The Divine Wings! Divine Wings? Yes, the legendary bird that the gods rode through the heavens! Knuckles, see if you can read this inscription. Divine wings, straggler of stars, lose their plumes to the dark and fall to the ground. The plumes become as stars returning to this land. We, the children of Babylon... Babylon? What connection do they have with these stones? We still don't know that. But could the stones those robots are after be the plumes written about here? The Divine Wings, Straddler of Stars, could they be power units used to operate some starship? So this Divine Wings thing is... Right. Babylon Guard. Much as I'll miss the vastness of space, this world still has its charm. Besides... With the previous two Riders games, even though they weren't remembered for their stories, still at least felt like something was happening. With the first game, it established the group that are the Babylon Rogues, Jet, Wave, and Storm, to be formidable racing rivals to Team Sonic. The second game, with it having a better story, in my opinion, it elaborated on their backstory by tying the game's main mechanic with Babylon Garden. In Free Riders, it's... A bunch of competitors racing together in a World Grand Prix, where no one gains anything, nor learn anything new. Gahia? <laughs> At least they all have a fun time, right? Why is that even a highlight of the story? Were the previous adventures not as enjoyable or something, Sonic? I don't know. One could argue that the story is just about having fun and not caring about earning tangible rewards. But I wouldn't even agree with that sentiment. Let me ask you this for those who have seen the cutscenes. Did it feel like a story about having a fun time during a competition? Well, unless your definition of fun is competitive bickering, you'd be out of luck. There isn't any more fun to this story than any other adventure. Yo! That race was white hot! I could feel the heat even from here! This time around, we've got an undisputed winner! Now let's see if we can get a word from our new champs! How's it feel? <laughs> it feels incredible! I'm finally feeling more confident working with Extreme Gear. I had a good time too. Always do when I get a chance to shut that Jet Punk up. Speaking of, how's Jet taking it? Uh, the three of them already left for home. But we still may be able to get them on for a comment. Let's try to track them down. <sighs> huh? Boss, there's a camera following after us. Ugh, what do you people want? Was there really any need to follow us? Hey, Jet! Thanks for the great race! I had fun! Yeah, well, there's gonna be payback for this. You just wait, Sonic the Hedgehog! Man, I'll look forward to that! That metal monstrosity just ruined my entire Grand Prix! Yeah, and whose fault is that again? So, is it safe to assume that you never had any money or treasure to give out? Yeesh. My job would be easier if you shot down your own plots like this more often. Ugh, what a rip! Going home empty-handed is gonna kill our rep as rogues! Oh, I'm real sorry about this, boss. 
Why? I actually had a pretty good time at the end of the day. I'd be lying if I said I didn't see any of this coming. The doctor's schemes are hardly anything new. What? So all that work uh, for Propo, yeah. no? Anyway, it sounds like we all managed to have fun. <sighs> Once again, the curtains close on the Grand Prix Championship with no clear champion to show for it. But hey, like Sonic says, it was a fun time for everyone involved just the same. Here's looking forward to the next exciting World Grand Prix. We'll see you there, I'm sure. Until then, Oma Chow here, signing off. Bye-bye. Heck, I kinda feel a bit for Vector, who was dragged into this competition by Amy, late no less, apparently hasn't eaten a meal recently, and owes money to some people, only for Dr. Eggman to not have any money at the end, regardless of whether they won or not, with Amy finishing with this. What? So all that work was pro bono? Aw, poor Mr. Vector. He should be thankful. It's not every day you get to race with two cuties like us. Right, Sonic? Uh, yeah. Anyway, it sounds like we all managed to have fun. <coughs> Would one of you two cuties mind giving this poor man room and board for the night? Someone write a fanfiction story about that. I demand thee! What about our money? Man, I almost forgot! That's light ball! I will admit, this game doesn't quite project a flattering light on some of the characters. Then again, Vector did steal Charmy Bees's pudding. Pressure yet? What, me? it doesn't seem like this adventure is any more fun than any of the others. It doesn't seem like a day of having fun, it just seems like a competition of bickering. That's it, it's not like they cool down and talk about what their day's been going on. That'd be more- that would- that's what I mean. I'm talking more about them, like, just ta sitting around and talking about something. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be interesting. Well, okay, it has to be somewhat interesting, it just it doesn't have to be... <laughs> there isn't any more to the story than that, and as a result it makes it hard for even a symbolic angle to back it up. For example, why couldn't they have the main mechanic of the game tie into what's happening in the story, just like the last game? Aside from the aforementioned gear changes to fit into the game's its mechanics, the game does nothing to tie its mechanics into the story, no less for such a unique control system to boot! Why couldn't the overall campaign instead be about four stories happening at similar times to each other, like with Sonic Heroes, but with the idea more fleshed out? Because, you know... 
the game now being an exclusive to a much more capable console than what the previous entries had to deal with and all that. If there was a counterpart to this game made for the Wii Balance Board peripheral for the Nintendo Wii console, where that peripheral works with a system that is much less capable than the Xbox 360, it would give an excuse for this game to have as little as it does have. I'll get to that later, but for now, let me describe how I would rework the story. The game would begin with the introductory cutscene showing King Doc being the same as before, but instead of a World Grand Prix, it would be presented more in the vein of a special competition where everyone must use unique gear that can only work with special movements called Natal. This being a reference to the Kinect sensor codename. and must maneuver through various challenges to win the competition. The competition would have just four teams to compete in, due to the Intense! nature of said contest. It will not be finished until all teams complete it. To make sure of this, the tournament would have a beginning set time and date to begin, with only a week, or month, for more time for the game's story to last, to finish the competition. Each team would be going through their own world paths, separated from each other with the TV screens being the only form of communication. Team Sonic would be the first team to show up and complete a few challenges, then Team Babylon would show up next. Instead of starting with the challenges, however, they face off against robot versions of Team Sonic. They turn out to be easy, but that is to be expected because of what little data was able to be gathered. Team Babylon would complete their missions, and by this point you can start to see where this is headed. Now you might at first think that Team Sonic would be far ahead, but as the story progresses, all of the teams would be encountering various obstacles unique to their worlds that they must deal with. This makes it so that all of the characters will finish at simultaneous times, in time for the final boss. Even the ending could be the same as Free Riders, though I would add in a final boss just to give the game a more final huzzah before the credits. At least more of a huzzah than what Metal Sonic does in Free Riders, anyway. Also making Eggman's plan more in line with conquering the world, as that's more his modus operandi. What was his plan even to begin with? Corner the market on extreme gear? That doesn't even sound conflict worthy on paper! But I digress. You might be asking, well, what might be happening in the meantime? Pretty much the characters just talking about random topics pertaining to them, whether it be a past event, an event happening right at the moment, or even a past event from a previous entry bleeding into their current events. The events would play out in a similar manner to Sonic Freeriders, where a cutscene would play after a few matches. The story might be a bit more dynamic, where the amount of tries and or rank would affect the story. Maybe have even multiple choice decisions? In any case, this would help in building a more dynamic and believable world than just Trash Talk Central. Not only would it flesh out the characters, but also make the structure of the game malleable, with it being able to have as many unique stages, music, and events as possible. It's not like the final product was struggling for disk space, now was it? Regardless, it would be simple to execute and not break the bank at the same time. Heck, this premise, minus the motion control bit because that's obviously not going to be revisited anytime soon, could be used in another Sonic Riders game for that matter. Hmm. <laughs> 
no, no. Oh, hey! Good grieving. Ha <laughs> ha. 
That, my friends, is how I would have made the most out of this situation. Moving along, let's move on to the other modes. Quickly! 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 Let me start this segment by saying I wasn't able to do any sort of multiplayer while playing this game, local or online. Local because I don't have anyone to play with me, and online because I don't have an Xbox Live membership. The best I could do with online was see the times uploaded from the time trials, where of course there are still times better than mine. How does that even happen? With that said, the two local multiplayer modes that are here are Tag Race and Relay Race. Tag Race was somewhat similar to the Tag Race mode from the first game. However, unlike the first game, this mode requires at least one human partner to help you out. Why doesn't the game have computer multiplayer for tag mode like the first game? I don't know. But not having computers to substitute for human players in video games with multiplayer is a pet peeve of mine. To add insult to injury, someone even put in the option to have or not have computer players in the race, but still requires at least one second human player! 